The Longer Discourse with Vachagotta Translated by Bhikkhu Sujato So I have heard. At one time the Buddha was staying near Rajagaha in the bamboo grove, the squirrel's feeding ground. Then the wanderer Vachagotta went up to the Buddha and exchanged greetings with him. When the greetings and polite conversation were over, he sat down to one side and said to the Buddha, For a long time I have had discussions with Master Gotama. Please teach me in brief what is skilful and what is unskilful. Vacha, I can teach you what is skilful and what is unskilful in brief or in detail. Still, let me do so in brief. Listen and pay close attention, I will speak. Yes, sir, Vacha replied. The Buddha said this. Greed is unskillful, contentment is skillful. Hate is unskillful, love is skillful. Delusion is unskillful, understanding is skillful. So there are these three unskillful things and three that are skillful. Killing living creatures, stealing and sexual misconduct. Speech that's false, divisive, harsh or nonsensical, covetousness, ill will and wrong view, these things are unskillful. Refraining from killing living creatures, stealing and sexual misconduct, refraining from speech that's false, divisive, harsh or nonsensical, contentment, kind-heartedness and right view, these things are skillful. So there are these ten unskillful things and ten that are skillful. When a mendicant has given up craving so it's cut off at the root, made like a palm stump, obliterated and unable to arise in the future, that mendicant is perfected. They've ended the defilements, completed the spiritual journey, done what had to be done, laid down the burden, achieved their own true goal, utterly ended the fetters of rebirth, and are rightly freed through enlightenment. Leaving aside Master Gotama, is there even a single monk disciple of Master Gotama who has realised the undefiled freedom of heart and freedom by wisdom in this very life, and lives having realised it with their own insight due to the ending of defilements? There are not just one hundred such monks who are my disciples, Vacha, or two, or three, or four, or five hundred, but many more than that. Leaving aside Master Gotama and the monks, is there even a single nun disciple of Master Gotama who has realised the undefiled freedom of heart and freedom by wisdom in this very life, and lives having realised it with their own insight due to the ending of defilements? There are not just one hundred such nuns who are my disciples, Vacha, or two, or three, or four, or five hundred, but many more than that. Leaving aside Master Gotama, the monks and the nuns, is there even a single layman disciple of Master Gotama, white-clothed and celibate, who with the ending of the five lower fetters is reborn spontaneously, to be extinguished there, not liable to return from that world? There are not just one hundred such celibate laymen who are my disciples, Vacha, or two, or three, or four, or five hundred, but many more than that. Leaving aside Master Gotama, the monks, the nuns, and the celibate layman, is there even a single layman disciple of Master Gotama, white-clothed, enjoying sensual pleasures, following instructions and responding to advice, who has gone beyond doubt, got rid of indecision, and lives self-assured and independent of others regarding the teacher's instruction? There are not just one hundred such laymen enjoying sensual pleasures who are my disciples' vacher, or two, or three, or four, or five hundred but many more than that. Leaving aside Master Gotama, the monks, the nuns, the celibate layman, and the layman enjoying sensual pleasures, is there even a single lay woman disciple of Master Gotama, white-clothed and celibate, who, with the ending of the five lower fetters, is reborn spontaneously, to be extinguished there, not liable to return from that world? There are not just one hundred such celibate lay women who are my disciples, Vacha, or two, or three, or four, or five hundred, but many more than that. Leaving aside Master Gotama, the monks, the nuns, the celibate laymen, 
the laymen enjoying sensual pleasures, and the celibate lay women. Is there even a single lay woman disciple of Master Gotama, white clothed, enjoying sensual pleasures, following instructions and responding to advice, who has gone beyond doubt, got rid of indecision, and lives self assured and independent of others regarding the teacher's instruction? There are not just one hundred such lay women enjoying sensual pleasures who are my disciples' vacher, or two, or three, or four, or five hundred, but many more than that. If Master Gotama was the only one to succeed in this teaching, not any monks, then this spiritual path would be incomplete in that respect. But because Master Gotama and monks have succeeded in this teaching, this spiritual path is complete in that respect. If Master Gotama and the monks were the only ones to succeed in this teaching, not any nuns, then this spiritual path would be incomplete in that respect. But because both Master Gotama, monks and nuns have succeeded in this teaching, this spiritual path is complete in that respect. If Master Gotama, the monks and nuns were the only ones to succeed in this teaching, not any celibate layman, then this spiritual path would be incomplete in that respect. But because both Master Gotama, monks, nuns and celibate laymen have succeeded in this teaching, this spiritual path is complete in that respect. If Master Gotama, the monks, nuns and any celibate laymen were the only ones to succeed in this teaching, not any laymen enjoying sensual pleasures, then this spiritual path would be incomplete in that respect. But because both Master Gotama, Monks, nuns, celibate laymen, and laymen enjoying sensual pleasures have succeeded in this teaching. This spiritual path is complete in that respect. If Master Gotama, the monks, nuns, celibate laymen, and laymen enjoying sensual pleasures were the only ones to succeed in this teaching, not any celibate lay women, then this spiritual path would be incomplete in that respect. But because both Master Gotama, monks, nuns, celibate laymen, Laymen enjoying sensual pleasures and celibate lay women have succeeded in this teaching. This spiritual path is complete in that respect. If Master Gotama, the monks, nuns, celibate laymen, laymen enjoying sensual pleasures and celibate lay women were the only ones to succeed in this teaching, not any lay women enjoying sensual pleasures, then this spiritual path would be incomplete in that respect. But because Master Gotama, monks, nuns, celibate laymen, Laymen enjoying sensual pleasures, celibate lay women, and lay women enjoying sensual pleasures have all succeeded in this teaching. This spiritual path is complete in that respect. Just as the Ganges River slants, slopes, and inclines towards the ocean, and keeps pushing into the ocean, in the same way Master Gotama's assembly, with both lay people and renunciates, slants, slopes, and inclines towards extinguishment and keeps pushing into extinguishment. Excellent, Master Gotama. I go for refuge to Master Gotama, to the teaching and to the mendicant Sangha. Sir, may I receive the going forth, the ordination in the Buddha's presence? Vacha, if someone formally ordained in another sect wishes to take the going forth, the ordination in this teaching and training, they must spend four months on probation. When four months have passed, if the mendicants are satisfied, they'll give the going forth, the ordination into monkhood. However, I have recognised individual differences in this matter. Sir, if four months probation are required in such a case, I'll spend four years on probation. When four years have passed, if the mendicants are satisfied, let them give me the going forth, the ordination into monkhood and the wanderer Vacha received the going forth, the ordination in the Buddha's presence. Not long after his ordination, a fortnight later, Venerable Vacha Gotta went to the Buddha, bowed, sat down to one side and said to him, Sir, I have reached as far as possible with the knowledge and understanding of a trainee. Please teach me further. Well then, Vacha, further develop two things. Serenity and discernment. When you have further developed these two things, they'll lead to the penetration of many elements. Whenever you want, you'll be capable of realising the following, in each and every case. May I wield the many kinds of psychic power, multiplying myself and becoming one again, appearing and disappearing, 
going unimpeded through a wall, a rampart, or a mountain as if through space, diving in and out of the earth as if it were water, walking on water as if it were earth, flying cross-legged through the sky like a bird, touching and stroking with my hand the sun and moon, so mighty and powerful, controlling my body as far as the Brahma realm. Whenever you want, you'll be capable of realising the following, in each and every case. With clear audience that is purified and superhuman, may I hear both kinds of sounds, human and divine, whether near or far. Whenever you want, you'll be capable of realising the following in each and every case. May I understand the minds of other beings and individuals, having comprehended them with my mind. May I understand mind with greed as mind with greed, and mind without greed as mind without greed, mind with hate as mind with hate, and mind without hate as mind without hate, mind with delusion as mind with delusion, and mind without delusion as mind without delusion, constricted mind as constricted mind, and scattered mind as scattered mind, expansive mind as expansive mind, and unexpansive mind as unexpansive mind. Mind that is not supreme as mind that is not supreme, and mind that is supreme as mind that is supreme. Mind immersed in samadhi as mind immersed in samadhi, and mind not immersed in samadhi as mind not immersed in samadhi. Freed mind as freed mind, and unfreed mind as unfreed mind. Whenever you want, you'll be capable of realising the following in each and every case. May I recollect many kinds of past lives, that is, one, two, three, four, five, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, a hundred, a thousand, a hundred thousand rebirths, many eons of the world contracting, many eons of the world expanding, many eons of the world contracting and expanding. May I remember, there I was named this, my clan was that, I looked like this, and that was my food, this was how I felt pleasure and pain, and that was how my life ended. When I passed away from that place I was reborn somewhere else, there too I was named this, my clan was that, I looked like this, and that was my food. This was how I felt pleasure and pain, and that was how my life ended. When I passed away from that place, I was reborn here. May I recollect my many past lives with features and details. Whenever you want, you'll be capable of realising the following in each and every case. With clairvoyance that is purified and superhuman, may I see sentient beings passing away and being reborn, inferior and superior, beautiful and ugly, in a good place or a bad place, and understand how sentient beings are reborn according to their deeds. These dear beings did bad things by way of body, speech and mind. They spoke ill of the noble ones, they had wrong view, and they chose to act out of that wrong view. When their body breaks up after death, they are reborn in a place of loss, a bad place, the underworld, hell. These dear beings, however, did good things by way of body, speech and mind. They never spoke ill of the noble ones, they had right view, and they chose to act out of that right view. When their body breaks up after death, they are reborn in a good place, a heavenly realm. And so, with clairvoyance that is purified and superhuman, may I see sentient beings passing away and being reborn, inferior and superior, beautiful and ugly, in a good place or a bad place. And may I understand how sentient beings are reborn according to their deeds. Whenever you want, you'll be capable of realising the following in each and every case. May I realise the undefiled freedom of heart and freedom by wisdom in this very life, and live having realised it with my own insight due to the ending of defilements. And then Venerable Vachagotta approved and agreed with what the Buddha said. He got up from his seat, bowed, and respectfully circled the Buddha, keeping him on his right, before leaving. Then Vachagotta, living alone, withdrawn, diligent, keen and resolute, 
soon realised the supreme end of the spiritual path in this very life. He lived, having achieved with his own insight, the goal for which people from good families rightly go forth from the lay life to homelessness. He understood, rebirth is ended, the spiritual journey has been completed, what had to be done has been done, there is no return to any state of existence, and Venerable Vachagotta became one of the perfected. Now at that time several mendicants were going to see the Buddha. Vachagotta saw them coming off in the distance, went up to them and said, Hello, venerables, where are you going? Reverend, we are going to see the Buddha. Well then, reverends, in my name, please bow with your head to the Buddha's feet and say, Sir, the mendicant Vachagotta bows with his head to your feet and says, I have served the Blessed One, I have served the Holy One. Yes, reverend, they replied. Then those mendicants went up to the Buddha, bowed, sat down to one side and said to him, Sir, the mendicant Vachagotta bows with his head to your feet and says, I have served the Blessed One, I have served the Holy One. I have already comprehended Vachagotta's mind and understood that he has the three knowledges and is very mighty and powerful, and deities also told me. That is what the Buddha said. Satisfied, the mendicants were happy with what the Buddha said.